Hello there, my flock. The Bad Raven here. I don't know how to start this video out and give you the whole story of how I didn't really want to make this video. I didn't really want to chime in on anything that's going on right now because I know how it is when you watch other people's channels and they start talking about different things going on in the real world here. Because I usually try to stay away from controversy. I try to stay positive. I try to have a good family-friendly channel. No matter how small it is. <laughs> I can't avoid this subject anymore. I mean, anybody that's watched my channel knows I love Star Wars. I have ever since I was... 10 years old. But I've been a die-hard Star Wars fan ever since then. I feel like I owe some of the die-hard fans like me an apology. I enjoyed the remake trilogy or whatever it was after the after my original trilogy of 4, 5, and 6. At the time, I enjoyed them. Now, retrospect, after I've seen a lot of the the backlash the fans got for not liking The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. At the time, I liked the whole trilogy of the new part, the new trilogy. But the more I listened to the criticism, the more I, when I watched them, the more I saw it, you know, blatantly being done on the movies. Instead of getting into that right this second, I kind of want to give you my history with Star Wars. Like I said, I was very young when I watched the original Star Wars. Fell in love with it. And I just was into sci-fi like crazy. Everything that came out after that was sci-fi related, whether it be the black hole or alien or any type of science fiction movie, I was drawn to it because of my early involvement with Star Wars. So when they decided, you know, to make Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi... I was, you know, in cloud nine. And I'll always be, I'd have a debt paid for those three movies really solidified the Bad Raven as a Star Wars fan and going to the movie theaters to watch any kind of movie was baked into my being, I guess, my DNA. And I will never, ever forget that because that is what makes the Bad Raven the Bad Raven. When the prequels came out, I was just excited. I was married to my first wife and I was really happy to see Star Wars back. Uh, George Lucas wasn't directing any of them. It's like he didn't direct just one of the first... Uh, uh, Star Wars the original but he was involved and I knew it was going to be great um, and like when I watched the first one I was excited and bought all the merchandise of course and as we sat back and saw that that trilogy didn't turn out the way we liked it I, I did not care for the prequel trilogy and it's hard to live up to a classic like the original Star Wars Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I give it, I, I cut it a break on that, which I did kind of like the the last Revenge of the Sith, most of all of all those. But it was just like there was no way to, I already knew the that they were getting to 4, 5, and 6. I knew that nothing was going to really change. You just saw a little background character build the character up but where they came from. But that's why I guess I didn't hold much weight with that. But when they started talking about coming out with the new 7, 8, and 9, I knew Disney had took it over. And I thought, well, that's a good thing. You know, they, they own it. They can start bre uh, breathing new life into it, you know. Because it was been a while since the last one. George Lucas wouldn't be attached. So I was kind of happy at that time because I didn't like the prequels. When the Force Awakens come out, the you know by my channel, I loved it. I 
applauded it. I thought it was really, really well made. And to its credit, I mean, I liked the Ray. I liked Poe. I liked Finn. I even liked BB-8. But I got to noticing that it's kind of Luke Skywalker's story just told in a female form. It's like they they didn't want to do anything too crazy. They wanted to be able to get the core fans involved, but they didn't want to really branch out into the massive universe of Star Wars. They kind of wanted to stay where they knew they had a they had a uh, group of fans that would love it, and it was well received. It made tons of money, and we watched it several times. It leads to the inevitable, you know, Last Jedi. And this is where I apologize to the original four, five, and six fans. Because I didn't, I was so in love with just starting a new part to this series that I didn't see what they were doing to Luke and to Leia and to Han. To not have them on screen, all three of them, was just a travesty for sure. I mean, the, you could see right after. Last Jedi with Carrie Fisher passing away how they should have really done a scene with them ahead of time because these actors are up in age and anything could happen to them I know it can happen on any set but they should have really thought of the fans on that because we you know they we wanted to see them all together not doing that was really bad not having a plan for the whole three parts, you know, maybe Leia was the whole plan and when she wasn't alive, when Carrie Fisher wasn't alive, it might have thrown a wrench in the way they were going. To not think that far ahead, I don't think they had any plan to get to the end. I don't know what they were going to do, but it didn't, what they, what they ended up with, I don't think they, <laughs> wanted to go that that route but also the way they treated Luke now I thought he was bad but at the end of the last Jedi with teleporting his being all the way across the the galaxy to be there to protect his sister I thought that was cool the way they did it but after you know he found out he was kind of a ghost <laughs> or a, a, what do you call it an illusion a hologram it kind of later on I kind of saw what everybody else did. and to have Luke run away like he did and and decide that the Jedi wasn't worth protecting and to bring him back because he made a mistake with with Kylo I felt was a cop-out because the Luke that we knew stood up for his father he stood up for the man that killed many people with the Death Star a bad character to the core and he stood by him that he knew he had good in him and he stayed and saved him from the, the dark side and that's another thing where when you bring back Palpatine in the Rise of Skywalker and you let Rey destroy Palpatine for the second time it takes away Anakin's Darth Vader's whole arc his whole his whole uh, redemption when he protected his son from the emperor and threw him over the whatever in the hole over into the power thing of the death star that held I mean that was awesome that was uh, the best thing you could ever see because that made, made Darth Vader turn back into Anakin and that that Luke had won by knowing that there was good in his father. You bring Ray into that and you say Palpatine wasn't killed or he was another version of Palpatine or whatever else they said on that, it really smacks Anakin in the face and the fans in the face too of why? Why would you, I mean I want Ray to look awesome too but why can't she have fought Snoke. Why wasn't that Snoke instead of him, instead of 
Palpatine. I thought that was where they were heading. When The Last Jedi came out and, and they just totally destroyed Snoke, I don't know if they didn't know that Ryan Johnson was going to do that, the director of The Last Jedi, and they didn't account for it. Because it just felt like in the last Rise of Skywalker, and I know at the time I gave it one of the best ratings I ever had, I, I shouldn't have. But, you know, you change when you start watching movies sometimes. Sometimes you like a movie when you first see it, and sometimes uh, you end up not liking it as much as you did when you first saw it. And then sometimes you hate a movie when you first saw it, and you end up liking a movie really well later on. I felt like they cheated the fans. I felt like they didn't have a plan. They just did the best they could, and they tried to squeeze it all into the last Rise of Skywalker, and it went belly up for me. After I watched it, after I started looking at the coincidences all in the the, uh, the last part, it just didn't feel like they tied everything together correctly and then didn't, didn't know what to do. Now leading to the last thing I want to talk about is with The Mandalorian. I started watching The Mandalorian on Disney Plus because I got a subscription through it and I knew it was coming out and I was kind of curious that I've always liked Boba Fett in the original trilogy I always wanted to thought he was a cool character I wanted to see more about him so this uh, character being a Mandalorian also I felt this was would be the greatest show ever because I really like Mandalorians and as I watched it it grew on me and I started really really looking forward to every Friday watching it with the Drew Drop and seeing what has happened and I like the Easter eggs and I could tell there was somebody else in control of this series that wasn't in control of sequel trilogy to the original Star Wars in Lucasfilms there was somebody else in control of those that the Mandalorian didn't have and it was uh, Favreau uh, the one that directed the original Iron Man he knew more of what the fans liked and he would you know put Easter eggs through there and he would put all little things that we would really like to see it was really cool they brought Bubba Fett back they even gave at the end of season two and I'm sorry for spoilers here uh, if you haven't watched the Mandalorian just uh, don't watch the rest of this video but when he uh, Mandalorian season two they brought, brought back a baby Yoda which is Goku they brought Luke Skywalker back and gave him his fight scene that he should have had in the sequel trilogy. I was really excited at that. And they created a lot bigger galaxy, I thought. You know, they went back to some of the same places in the original trilogy. But I think they were starting to expand out good. And they uh, also had a great actress in there, a tough woman character. Uh, Gina Carano played in The Mandalorian, I thought she deserved her own uh, series because they've been screaming about having strong women characters and you can't get any stronger than her. She's been an MMA, MMA fighter, you know, and turned actress and I think she, you know, a very attractive lady. I know it had nothing to do with her acting ability, but I mean she she is a very fine actress and when I found out just a few days ago that they unceremonially fired her of some tweets which Disney should not be saying anything about anybody's tweets with the James Gunn incident and his tweets and other people that work for them and their tweets for them to come out against her and I'm not for any political thing I'm just saying to come out against her and use the reason they did I thought was very unfair I think we live in we're living in a time where you can't say what you mean anymore you will be you can't make a mistake you can't you know you have to be you have to do you have to do and say what they want you to say or you're not allowed to be able to function in this world and I don't like that I don't like that's turning me against a lot of Hollywood right now and a lot of other 
situations. I just felt like she was very, very uh, done very, very wrong. And I was looking forward to seeing her either in more Mandalorian episodes. And now I won't get that. Which leads me to my last statement. And it's going to be a bold statement. It's going to be something that I thought I'd never say. That I would never even cross my mind, even put out there. But I feel like Star Wars is dead to me now. Not just because of the Gina Carano thing. I've been giving it a chance. I've been trying to go with it to keep it alive in my mind. I know I can't keep the whole franchise alive. Can't do it anymore. I can't keep saying it's still my favorite thing. It's not. It's changed. And the people at Lucasfilm have the ones that changed it. And Disney has a big uh, say in that because it's their company. And they do not seem to care whether or not the fans have a say in anything. I understand you can't do everything the fans want. It's a business. I understand that. And you've got to protect your bottom line and everything. But I just feel like they have lost sight of the fans. The ones that have been with them from the beginning. Not just the ones that's jumped on the bandwagon recently. I'm talking about the die-hard fans that buy your merchandise. I think that they have really treated us wrong. So I'm making this video to say I will not be buying any more Star Wars related items unless it's something for 4, 5, and 6. I'm not buying any more movies that they put out. I'm not watching any more movies they put out. I'm just going to... The, the only movie that I would buy about Star Wars if they came out with the original, uncut, unaltered edition of Star Wars... The original Star Wars, Episode 4, Empire Strikes Back, Episode 5, and Return of the Jedi, Episode 6. I will buy those, but I'm not buying any other of their stuff. I'm not going to go into their cartoons to figure out what's going on with the next episode. I'm not doing it. I'm not watching Mandalorian anymore. I was really looking forward to Bubba Fett, but I'm not doing it. I don't, can't support a company that is just so hostile to its fans that have been there for them. You're killing a cash cow. You're killing the go a goose that laid the golden egg. You're killing us out. You're making us wonder why we ever liked them. I used to tell stories about how much I love Star Wars and you can see by my movies over here and posters and everything that I've got that I love Star Wars. I've tried to love the new stuff that's coming out but I cannot keep trying if the company that put them out doesn't care anything about me whether I like it or not so that's my video and I just want to say I'm not trying to say anything bad about any particular person or anything like that I'm just saying how I feel what this means to me, what what the future holds for me with this. The Star Wars is dead for me. I feel like something inside me will never be the same after this. I'm just going to say, always remember the Bad Raven is your friend, and we appreciate you on the, the Bad Raven channel. From the Bad Raven and the Drew Drop, I'm going to let you go. And goodbye.